Welcome to Adapting Class. IV therapy communication is very important for the ankle. So nursing school, there's two things that always get people confused, infiltration and extravasation. So this video is to make it easy, try to explain those technology for you and how when you see the question, you'll be able to use it to answer the question. So the first one we'll talk about is infiltration. They are all, both of them, infiltration and stabilization occur when you use IV, right, medication. Uh, it leaks, they both indicate leaks into the surrounding uh, tissue. And that causes problem. We don't want things to leak. The severity of the condition is what we um, distinguish the two between based on the severity of the condition and what medication is being used. So the first one is infiltration, right? Infiltration, something has infiltrated. The key word is a non-visicant. It's not visicant that leaks, okay? Infiltrate um, IV fluid, infiltrate into the surrounding uh, tissue. That's all. It's non-visicant. So if it's a visicant, it cannot be infiltration. It leaks, it's going to show signs and symptoms. What do you think you're going to see? Swelling at the IV side. Keyword, swelling at that side. If you swell, blood cannot flow, then it will be cold. So coldness, to touch, when you touch it. Okay, that's key. Then what will happen? What do you think will happen? The skin will look like pollen, or it will be blanching. Okay. And that's when the nurse will know that something is not right. The IV may not flow the way it's supposed to. And then as the fluid get there, patients start having discomfort or they feel some tightness. These are buzzwords you see in the question. Um, you see the IV will slow down or it will stop the IV fluid um, flow. Nothing is going through. You know that the IV has infiltrated. So what do you do? What is it, do you do? Management for this condition is straightforward. Okay, stop the IV immediately. Take the edema off, elevate it. Elevate the extremities. Okay, and then try to help with the pain, some warm or cold compression to help with the edema as much as possible, based on the fluid, whichever you're going to choose, warm or cold compression, and then restart another IV somewhere, restart IV uh, another site, not the same site, okay? It's very, very important. Um, the most important, if I have to choose an answer choice, choose different extremities. So go to the left arm, or if it's on the left, go to the, uh, go to the other arm right extremities either the right or left depending on which one you were using that's all this opposite is extravasation if you know physical and if you know infiltration you will know extravasation what is the part the difference leakage of what is a vc can't into the surrounding tissue is different, right? And these can lead to necrosis. Because of that, you need incident report for this. These has to be reported. Infiltration does not need to be reported. Somebody will say, what is a physical? The most common thing we use is chemotherapy. These are all visicants. Um, We can also use vasopressin. Vesopressin is also Visican, like what? Epinephrine or no epi. These are all Visicans. Um, vancomycin. These are also Visicans. Chemotherapy drug like Dozorobicin, Vincristin, they are all um, Visican. The common one you may see is calcium or potassium. Potassium can infiltrate. When infiltrate, it can cause uh, extravasation. 
Okay, what same things do you see? Is the same thing you see in the infiltration by severe. So symptoms is this is severe pain. They will have severe pain. Uh, and they will feel like something is burning as the tissue die. They may have swelling over there. There will be redness. And they will form blisters as the tissue die also. Um, the skin can break. Or you see necrosis, like I told you. Very, very key. What is the management? Same thing. Don't overthink it. This, you cannot just go and start IV somewhere. Stop the IV immediately. Um, but key fat, leave the catheter in place. You have to leave the catheter because we're going to use the catheter to suck all the fluid from the tissue. So you're going to attempt, okay, attempt to aspirate the fluid that has leaked into the surrounding tissue. And what do you do? This is one you give them antidote. Antidote through the IV, that's why you leave it in place. The most common one is a, a vessel constrictor like phantalomin. Don't forget this. Or if you have vasopressin, this will use it to uh, um, basically administer it antidote and destroy the overlying and, uh, fluid. Most of the time we use it for vasopressin. It's very common. And then you apply some cold um, or warm compression as the other infiltration. Okay, you also have to elevate the limb. So, and then uh, you monitor for necrosis and you file your incident report. Very, very important. Once again, when you see the patient will have severe pain, burning, redness, the skin will break, your management stop the IV right away, leave the catheter in place, attempt to aspirate the surrounding tissue using the same IV, and then inject antidote if it's a press, vasopressin like phentolomy into the tissue to counteract the, um, the, the, the fluid that has leaked, uh, apply some warm or cold compression, elevate the extremities and monitor for necrosis. So what is the um, difference between them is the fluid type. The fluid type for infiltration is non-visicant. The fluid type for extravasation is what? Visicant. What is the pain level? It's mild discomfort in the infiltration and the severe one or burning sensation in extravasation. What does the skin look like? This look in the infiltration, you have swelling and pallor. In the extravasation, you see blisters and necrosis. And the management, remove the IV, place a new one in another extremities in infiltration. And then in the extravasation, leave it in place, stop it, aspirate, give antidote before you take it out. And then warm compression, monitor for necrosis. This is IV therapy. How do you prevent this? Last one, prevention. How do I prevent these conditions? You have to know this in case and they have they ask you prevention. Choose the proper IV site. So proper IV site. Choose the site. Um, avoid a small fragile vein if you're giving them visicant. Avoid it. Avoid it as, as much as possible. Um, you got to monitor IV site frequently to make sure nothing happens, to look for early signs, right? Um, and the best one is use central line for visicants. If you have to, try to use central line for visicants. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, share it, uh, and subscribe to Adapt and Class for more content like that. Thank you for watching. Good luck in your exams and your nursing school.